A Mr. Lai, oh sorry, I meant Mr. Lai, made a speech to wow the world. I watched it and felt maybe his surname really is L I E Lai. There are so many weasel words in his speech. I may need season two or three, but for now, here are just a few examples. First, he repeatedly calls Taiwan a nation. I know for a fact that 183 nations in the world, the great, great majority of countries in the world, consider it a region of China. So do the United Nations. You know, when kids play house, they can pretend to be what they are not. But if adults do that in real life, reality strikes back. Mr. Lai said more countries around the world support Taiwan's meaningful international participation. Sure, the region was able to participate in the sovereign nation-only World Health Assembly as Chinese Taipei, but since 2017, the World Health Organization or WHO has stopped inviting it, even as an observer. Why? The WHO couldn't condone Taiwan's separatist stance. Mr. Lai said there is increasing proof that Taiwan is a Taiwan of the world. Let's ask Nauru. Honduras, Nicaragua, Kiribati, the Solomon Islands, El Salvador. You want more? Okay. Burkina Faso, the Dominican Republic, Panama, and Sao Tome and Principe. Ask what they think about it. These are the 10 countries that ditched Taiwan and established or re-established diplomatic ties with China during the eight years of DPP's rule. Mr. Lai, I've got news for you. Your world has been shrinking. Mr. Lai also said Taiwan is the MVP of the democratic world, meaning most valuable player. Very imaginative. He mentioned actually democracy 31 times in the speech. He will win the sympathy of some, but not those in the know. Granted, voters in Taiwan cast their votes every four years, but any hopeful winner needs to be anointed by Washington. Hence, before every race, candidates line up for the job interview. Mr. Lai's running mate was also the former go-between between Taipei and Washington. When an external power calls the shots, do voters have a say? Instead of MVP, Taiwan is probably the LVP, the least valuable player of the democratic world. I'm not done yet. There's more coming. Mr. Lai said his predecessor Tsai Ing-wen laid a solid base for Taiwan's development. Oh, please pull the other one. After eight years of DPP rule, have living standards improved? The economy grew by 2 to 3 percent on average, with one exception in 2021. And the Chinese mainland, please remind me, how much was it during the same period? 5.6 percent, double that of the island. Actually, I talk to young people who are seeking opportunities here on the mainland and, believe me, they came here for a reason. That also explains why Lai's party, the DPP, only got 40 percent of the votes in the latest leadership contest, a dip of 17 percentage points compared with the previous one. A very solid base indeed. And the DPP lost the majority in the legislature. Is that a sign of satisfaction? Oh, by the way, have you watched that on social media? A fist fight in a new legislature. Do they have MNA in Taiwan? Seems that the most valuable player of the democratic world, in Mr. Lai's words, got a black eye. My biggest problem with Mr. Lai's speech is that he wants people to believe that the United States is a guarantor of peace for the island. To me, and I believe for a lot of people around the world, peace and reliability is an oxymoron when it comes to the United States. And the U.S. has no qualms to say publicly its true intentions. Taiwan is located at a critical node within the first island chain, anchoring a network of U.S. allies and partners. That is critical to the region's security and critical to the defense of vital U.S. interests in the Indo-Pacific. And it's the people of Taiwan who are footing the bill. Talking about the bill, how about Taiwan's budget for economic development for this year? Down 9%. But the defense budget is up 10%. Guess where the money will go? I can go on and on about Mr. Lai's theatrics, but let's waste no more time. 
The true story is very simple. U.S. self-proclaimed strategic interests and Taiwan's self-serving politicians have prevented China's reunification. The last thing China would want is to have a war at its doorstep. But if someone carves it out, guess what China will do? So next time you listen to Mr. Lai's speech, don't get fooled by the weasel words. Read between the lines.